Hey movie lovers, welcome to What's in Cinemas. I'm Charlie David Page, I'm the editor at Switch. Join me as I take you through what's hitting the big screen in August 2023. What are you doing? Just serenading our pet peacock. I love you. These people are strange. They have birds for pets. He's like me! Peacocks are just a bunch of goddamn show-offs, if you ask me. Let's keep it in the family with About My Father. Sebastian falls in love with Ellie, played by Leslie Bibb, who's from a wealthy family. But when they decide his father, Robert De Niro, should meet her family, it's something of a clash of cultures. I would love to make a full Italian dinner for everybody. We don't keep a lot of food here. A man of scout who always finds a way to feed his family. Now's the time that we need. My father has an old Italian saying, family isn't one important thing, it's everything. I can't believe you put this all together from what we have in the kitchen. It's artichoke and poultry. So, so. Oh, no. Comedian Sebastian Maniscalco co-wrote and directed this film, so if you're up for another taste of About My Father, click the link up top to watch the full trailer now. Now let's dive into the little-known, truish story, Chevalier. Joseph Bolognier is a young black man living in the 1700s, but that doesn't stop his wealthy white father from trying to enrol him in one of the most prestigious French schools. It gives him the opportunity to flourish, becoming a master of everything from fencing to dancing, and more so, a legendary classical musician. The show-off who spoiled Mozart's concert. May I play with you, monsieur? Well, I hope this won't be embarrassing for you. Who the hell is that? You are quite a remarkable man, Joseph. I, Marie Antoinette, Queen of France, hereby anoint you Chevalier. In any other country, a man of your colour would not be wearing such fine clothes. One day, the whole world will know me. And of course, the music will be spectacular. Bold. You'll have to pick the fact from fiction from this one. While the character was 100% real, some of the scenarios were not, such as the electric battle between Joseph Bollinet and his real-life rival Mozart. The filmmakers calling that a haiku that the rest of the movie endeavours to expand upon. Now Chris reviewed Chevalier at the Sydney Film Festival. Here's what he had to say. Chevalier attempts to highlight the unknown history of Joseph Bologna. Um, it is a biopic set in the 1700s. It opens very strong with this kind of epic music battle, but then sort of fades into style biopic territory with unbalanced tones, bouncing around genres from drama to romance, and of course balancing the music as well. It always felt like one film was starting and another was beginning. While it is a great insight into sort of his untold story, it's sort of very unpolished in its delivery, and that's why it gets three stars. Chris's full review is up on the website now. You can find the link in the description to this video. It's time to get out of the water and probably a few towns back just to be safe. The Meg is back with twice as much bite with The Trench. Jason Statham, Wu Jing and a daring research team plus a whole beach full of tourists must outrun, outsmart and outswim the deadly Megs after a malevolent mining operation goes wrong. Three massive Megs and who knows what else have escaped the breach. We just hope it goes better than last time. What happened last time? You don't want to know. Jake here at Switch says, unlike John Turtletaub's The Meg, Ben Wheatley's sequel looks like it knowingly leans into the inherent goofiness of its premise. He is hoping that Meg 2 is a success, so we can see film adaptations of the rest of Steve Allen's Meg novels, like the ludicrously titled Meg, Hell's Aquarium. It's time to take a trip of resilience with On the Wandering Paths. A writer with a love of extreme experiences, played by Jean Dujardin, takes things one step too far one night with shocking consequences. Hey Jacques, 
J'étais tombé du rebord de la nuit, m'étais écrasé sur la terre. Il avait suffi de 8 mètres pour me briser les côtes, les vertèbres, le crâne. Corsé était dans un lit, je m'étais dit à voix presque haute. Si je m'en sors, je traverse la France à pied. Si je réussissais ma traversée, j'obtiendrais réparation. The film's based on the award-winning autobiography of Sylvain Tesson. So to check it out for yourself, click up top now to watch the trailer for On the Wandering Paths. Time now for another movie about our connection to nature, though this one's a documentary. It's called Rachel's Farm. Rachel Ward is more than just an actor and director. As a farm owner, she's faced increasing challenges, having to turn to new techniques not only to survive, but as a way to help the planet. Regenerative farming is not to harm your land. You're burying carbon rather than releasing it. That is it. The shift to regenes to combat climate change. And that is what I'm going to commit every part of my being to. Driving up the coast. We learnt about totally different grazing management. No insecticides, no herbicides, some biofertiliser, and making my own compost. So much goes wrong. It didn't look good for a while, but still I felt this driving urgency to show this type of farming could work. Not afraid to get her hands dirty, the film shows not just a change on Rachel's farm, but a revolution that's taking place across Australia as conventional agriculture adapts to changing conditions. And Connor has spoken to Rachel about her farm's revolution. The interview's online now, so click on the link in the description below to check it out. Now let's take the adventure of a lifetime with The Miracle Club. A group of friends win a trip to Lourdes in France to honour their dead friend Maureen, but on the way, an unexpected person from their past finds them. <laughs> you can't go. I'm going. What'll I do on me own? Go back to bed. Jack, I'm back, ma. Maybe. Maybe not. Holy oh, Mary, mother of God. I don't shock and believe it. Excuse me. <clears throat> Maureen's daughter. We all thought she was dead. Hi. I wouldn't have recognized you. Forty years will do that to you. Is there only one bed? Your mom wouldn't have fussed. I am not my mother. Ain't that the truth? Oh, you remember me. I was sure you wouldn't. Who forgets family? Yeah, who does that? Why did you leave? Never come back. Leave? I was banished, Eileen. Along the way, they're looking for a miracle, but they manage to find a little redemption too. Now, we're giving you the chance to win one of five double passes to see The Miracle Club in cinemas thanks to Transmission Films, so head to maketheswitch.com.au until the 30th of July to enter. Grab your tinfoil helmets, we're headed to Asteroid City. This is Wes Anderson at his kookiest, with an ensemble cast as long as your arm, and then some. Set in 1955 in America's Midwest, this town is celebrating a sky-gazing weekend. That is, until an alien joins in the festivities and the community is put into lockdown. How long can they keep us in Asteroid City legally? The world will never be the same. That's an alien doing Jeffy Jacks. That's an alien in a top hat. What's out there? The meaning of life. Maybe there is one. Are you married? I'm a widower, but don't tell my kids. You're saying her mother died three weeks ago. Let's say she's in heaven. Which doesn't exist for me, of course, but you're Episcopalian. In my loneliness, I learned to give complete and unquestioning faith to the people I love. I don't know if that includes you, but it included my daughter and your four children. Sometimes I think I feel more at home outside the Earth's atmosphere. Oh, wow. Me too. They're strange, aren't they? They're children. Compared to normal people. Yes, that's correct. It's true. Mm -hmm. Chris caught up with these townsfolk at the Sydney Film Festival. Here's what he had to say. In the modern cinema climate, there are a few directors like Wes Anderson that are the drawing card to go for a film. More than the story or the cast, people go to a Wes Anderson film expecting Wes Anderson. That's what they're coming for. And Asteroid City is absolutely no exception. Being 11 films in, you kind of think that maybe some of those classic Wes Anderson staples would be beginning to dry up. 
but here they are absolutely at their A game as they always have been. The production design, the set design, the costume design, the cinematography, it's all absolutely joyful and fantastic. And what we expect from Wes Anderson films. Astro City is the first time he's sort of taken a bit more of a sci-fi approach. And with that, I feel it lends to a bit more of a comedic and quirky film. Quirky and Wes Anderson are kind of synonymous for each other, but Asteroid City leaning into that sci-fi really, really elevates that quirky stuff. The comedy is great. The all-star cast with returning staples, Jason Schwartzman, Scarlett Johansson, Tilda Swinton, just to name a few. Um, they are bringing their absolute A-game. They've worked with him multiple times, and here is no exception. They know what to do, and they deliver it 10 out of 10. As well as what we know from Wes Anderson, the children actors he sources and finds for his projects are always fantastic. And here they are having an absolute blast. With the sci-fi element, we get to see one of the best and funniest alien designs I think we've seen in recent years. Um, also, with Asteroid City, something that I don't think has been revealed in trailers, so I won't go into too deep of a spoiler here, but it is definitely one of the more meta Wes Anderson films than we've seen in the past. Definitely leaning into, like, the tropes of cinema and how he can use that for comedic effect. Asteroid City is in cinemas this August, and I give it four stars. Chris's full review is on the Switch website now, so check out the link in the description below. And we'll be giving you the chance to win one of five double passes to see Asteroid City for yourself thanks to Universal. Just head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 30th of July and the 6th of August to enter. Out on the sea with nowhere to hide, take a ride with Dracula, Voyage of the Demeter. The Demeter was chartered to carry 50 unmarked wooden crates from Romania to London. The doomed crew struggle to survive as the long ocean voyage progresses. In the night it drinks our blood. He is here. We call him Dracula. Jake says this 119 minute film is based on a single chapter that's just 28 pages from Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now despite this entire thing being set on board a boat, it's a hell of a chapter and director Andre Ovredel has proven he can find horror in the most limited of locations with the autopsy of Jane Doe. And we'll be giving you the chance to win one of five double passes to see Dracula, The Voyage of Demeter, thanks to Studio Canal. Just head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 30th of July and the 6th of August to enter. Buckle up, we're off and racing with Gran Turismo. Despite the fact this is clearly a shameless plug for the video game, it's also a true story of a team of gamers who were taken by an idealistic motorsports executive, played by Orlando Bloom, transformed by a failed former race car driver, played by David Harbour, and turned into a real-life racing team. What's next? It's major leagues. The other drivers are going to hate you. Come on! Whoopsie. What is your problem? It's part of the game, it's called racing. If you miss a line in the game, you reset. You miss it on the track, you could die. So should we be putting pedal to the metal or slamming on the brakes? Find out when Chris's review for Gran Turismo drops on the 8th of August. We'll add a link to the description once it goes live. Get ready to go behind bars in the Indian prison flick, Jailer. In this action comedy thriller featuring superstar Reginikant, a gang tries to rescue their leader from prison while others are stuck at a problem, and the jailer of the prison shows off to stop them all. Written and directed by Nelson, this also marks the 169th film made by Reginikant. Now for something that is out of this world, let's meet a little grey man named Jules. Ben Kingsley plays Milton, an unassuming man from a quiet town whose life is thrown upside down when a UFO crashes into his backyard and an alien ends up connecting three people in remarkable ways. May I touch him? 
She shouldn't know. We gotta trust her. There's nothing else we can do. You could kill her. Kill me? You can't kill me. I'll kill you. That's what I'll do. Guys, stop it. You think we can call him Jules? He's no Jules. He's more of a Gary. Your dad was in here earlier. He said he was buying apples for an alien. Like an illegal alien? Thank you for the picture. He hands them to me all the time. Maybe he's trying to tell you something. Dad, come on. I'm worried. What you have said has not been normal. I'm okay. How can you say that when you're buying apples for an alien? The government is searching for a security satellite that crashed. Any moment we waste is a moment they can discover him. You've seen the movies. You know what happens to these guys when they fall to Earth. Honestly, this is just the kind of offbeat comedy that's right up my alley. And it comes with good origins too. It's directed and produced by Mark Turtletail, the producer of the much loved Little Miss Sunshine. And you may have also spotted Jane Curtin there. Remember, she was in that other alien related comedy, Third Rock from the Sun. Let's take a look at the simultaneous beauty and harshness of nature in Godland. This is a historical drama centered on a Danish priest who made a pilgrimage across the largely unexplored Iceland in the late 1800s. was written and directed by Helena Parmesan, the filmmaker behind A White White Day. It premiered at the 2022 Cannes Film Festival in the Uncertain Regard section. Hope you're not claustrophobic. Sanctuary is asking you to spend a very tense 96 minutes in a very small hotel room. Hal, played by Christopher Abbott, and dominatrix Rebecca, that's Margaret Qualey, have a long-standing arrangement. That is, until Hal scores a new high-flying job and wants to cut ties. It's gonna be so weird to not have this as part of my routine anymore. What do you mean? You know, this job. Your new role at the company. A CEO. Yeah, it's a really big deal. This is not a good idea to keep doing this. Your new job, you wouldn't be able to do it without what I taught you. What do you want? Half of the salary for the job that I got you. You're insane. It would be a story. CEO shoves cotton swab into own penis when commanded. Denver dominatrix tells all. But I mean, when you say it like that, it makes it sound weird. I, I don't want to play right now. I'm not. You filmed our session secretly? Job. Ashley checked this one out. Here's what she had to say. Hi Switch viewers. So imagine a movie with the ever handsome Christopher Abbott stuck in a hotel room with a sex worker and an evening of messed up hijinks and mental games on Suze. Now sounds like a pretty good plot for a film right? Well not only is this the plot of the great 2019 film Piercing, it is also the plot of the even better 2023 film Sanctuary. This time around, Christopher Abbott is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Margaret Qualley, who is actually giving what I would consider the best performance of her career here. It's one of those films that you really want to go in knowing as little as possible, so I'm going to stop there talking about the plot. But it's a really breezy 96-minute thriller, and even if the ending is slightly too neat for my liking. It is as fun as it is thrilling and ultimately I think you'll have a really good time with it. So be sure to check out Sanctuary when it hits Australian cinemas on August 17th. Ashley's full review is on the Switch website now so make sure you check out the link in the description below and we'll also be giving away five double passes to Sanctuary thanks to Kismet. Head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 6th and the 13th of August for your chance to win. We have proof every dog has its day in Strays. Naive Border Terrier Reggie, voiced by Will Ferrell, is abandoned by his owner Doug, played by Will Forte. But he soon comes across a gang of pooches in a similar situation, and they decide to seek revenge. Take it from me, kid. He left your ass. Oh, that can't be right. You are officially a stray. That would mean 
Duck doesn't love me. Poor little guy. I should probably talk to him. I am a therapy dog. Red, you can learn how beautiful it can be when you're off the leash. This beer is making me dizzy. It's about to get real dizzy up in this bitch. I'm having a great time. Get this motherfucker right here. What you want, huh, What's homie? Going? You little bitch-ass friend with the motherfucking home perm and shit. What did you just say? Hey, you I red. would hate for this to get violent. My bitch. You were straight. You can do anything you want. I'm going back to Doug's. What? The fuck, man. I'm gonna bite his dick off. Oh, wait. Did he just say bite? Yeah, I I'm still a little drunk, but... I said, gonna... I'm gonna bite his dick off. Oh, we gonna fuck shit up. Jake says the film is from the director of Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar, which is either an endorsement or a warning, depending on your sense of humor. So, will this be a dog's breakfast, or will it be able to run with the big dogs? You'll have to wait until the 17th of August to find out. But in the meantime, click up top to check out the final trailer for Strays. Next up, it's the latest space survival drama that's sure to have you gripping your cinema seat. It's called The Moon. A South Korean manned mission turns to chaos when an astronaut is left stranded in space and is quickly running out of oxygen. Time is fast running out to save them. Following a run at both the Sydney and Melbourne International Film Festivals, Shin Ultraman will also be getting a small Australian release from the 24th of August. Spawned from the Ultraman series from 1966, the film follows a group of scientific agents who go up against kaiju with charming puppets and people in suits that feels like a throwback to better times. Jake's review for Shin Ultraman is up on the website, so click on the link in the description below to check it out now. Bring on the hits and the famous faces as we jam along with Ego, the Michael Gadinsky story. Michael Gadinsky was a pioneer Australian music promoter, backing some of the country's biggest names while forging a path to bring some of the world's biggest stars to our shores. You'd feel he's in the building, he's somewhere. Bam, he'd blast through the fucking door. We're gonna make you a star, kid. So he's always looking for something that somebody hasn't heard yet. He had the energy of a rock drummer. Max! It's Michael Kaninsky, how are you? In the late 60s, radio had hardly any Australian content. I couldn't understand why people weren't supporting their own more. That's why Mushroom started. The whole evolution of Australian music is about to erupt. First few years of Mushroom, there was a crazy risk. People said, oh, this isn't going to work. If he had faith in it, the more it drove him. He has been so influential in an entire continent's music scene. That's how expansive he was as a human being. I imagine being a rock promoter as the biggest fucking nightmare. There has to be a reason why he did it. As you can see, there's some big names attached to this doco. If you don't know his name, or you're a fan of any kind of music, this is a must watch. I'll be checking out Ego, the Michael Gadinsky story ahead of its world premiere at the Melbourne International Film Festival. So keep an eye on the description for a link to my review. Enter if you dare, it's time to explore Disney's Haunted Mansion. Clearly trying for the same success after Pirates of the Caribbean ride turned movie, the story here sees a woman and her son enlist a motley crew of so-called spiritual experts to help rid their home of supernatural squatters. This mansion is unhinged. <laughs> These ghosts definitely don't want to leave. Death lurks around every corner. <laughs> Give us a break. There's so many bad people in the world. Haunt them. Amen. I do like surprises. Is anybody else seeing this? I hope you do too. Whoa! We're gonna fight, whether we like it or not. Or else we're stuck here for eternity. Yeah, if this comes down to an exorcism, we're in big trouble. Ah! This house is dripping with souls, but there's always room for 
one more. Jess from the Switch team says there's rumors that the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland is actually haunted. There are countless instances of park guests coming forward to admit they've sprinkled ashes of their loved ones while on the ride. But right now, if you want a sneak peek at Haunted Mansion for yourself, click up top now to watch the film's full trailer. Time for a look at romance later in life with My Sailor, My Love. Howard, a retired sea captain, is living on his own when his middle-aged daughter suggests to get help him. But the initial interaction with his housekeeper is anything but amicable. How much is she paying you? 400. I'll give you five. If you never darken my door again. I just came to apologize. I am nobody's fool. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> All sorts of little foofy bits going on. They're not your girls, Dad. I'm your girl. Dear Annie, can't you see what's happening here? He may tell you he loves you, Annie, but there's only one person Annie. he cares about. Annie! <laughs> Despite being set off the west coast of Ireland, this is Finnish director Klaus Harrow's English language debut. And we're giving you the chance to win one of five double passes to see My Sailor, My Love thanks to Kismet. Just head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 20th and the 27th of August to enter. Now for A24's take on the sliding doors concept. Get ready to delve into past lives. Nora and Hai Sung grew up together, but were separated when Nora moved away from South Korea. Years later, when they reunite for a week in New York, Nora now happily married, the two contemplate what could have been between them. What a good story this is. Childhood sweethearts who reconnect 20 years later and realize they were meant for each other. In the story, I would be the evil white American husband standing in the way of destiny. Shut up. He was just this kid in my head for such a long time. I think I just missed him. Did he miss you? Hands on! Wow, Dota. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jess caught this gem at the Sydney Film Festival. Here's what she had to say. Past Lives featured in the Sydney Film Festival lineup earlier this year to sold out sessions, which is incredible for a film like this. It's by an unknown director, Celine Song, making her feature film debut. She's better known as a playwright, which means those skills transferred to the big screen. She's written a truly delicate and humble and really unique screenplay. Her stars Greta Lee and Tio Yo have just gobbled up those in-between moments of subtlety and really feel the humanness of it all. Celine Song also showcases Seoul and New York in ways you've never seen before. And unless you've been living under a rock, you know that female directors are dominating the box office at the moment. So let's keep that momentum going with past lives. I gave it four stars. Jess's full review was up on the website now. You can check it out by following the link in the description below. You'll also have the chance to see past lives for yourself as we're giving away five double passes thanks to Studio Canal. Just head to maketheswitch.com.au between the 20th and the 27th of August for your chance to win. Finally, everything balances out with The Equalizer 3. Denzel Washington returns as Robert McCall, now hiding out in southern Italy. You seem like a man who understands violence. I like this place. You can't take that from me. I can take anything I want. Yeah. 
Jake says this is the fifth collaboration between Denzel Washington, who's one of America's finest actors, and Antoine Fuqua, who he calls one of the most soulless directors working in America today. Jake attributes Denzel's Oscar win for their collaboration Training Day for Denzel not having received one years earlier for the film Glory. So the question is, will this be one for the fans only? Time will tell when The Equalizer 3 hits cinemas on the 31st of August. And that's what's in cinemas this month. Now, the Switch website doesn't have any advertising on it because we think that it's really important to keep the films front and center. So we rely on generous donations from people such as yourself to keep the website running. We have our Ko-fi and our Patreon up on the screen right now. And anything that you're able to give keeps independent film journalism alive. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've, we've got heaps of great videos like this, trailers, interviews, and heaps of other entertaining stuff. Just remember, like it, follow it, right here at Switch. Let's go!